I thought that I would just show you his finished portrait. I'm just trying to make it look a bit neater, I suppose. And I think I know what it is, so I'm going to open it on camera. Oh my goodness! Hi everyone, I'm Kira, a pet and animal portrait artist. And today is going to be sort of an artist studio vlog. Not really a studio though, because I don't actually have a studio. I just kind of do my art wherever I can. Um, but excuse my voice right now, I do have a cold, so I do sound a bit stuffed up. Um, but I've got a really big, important job to do today. So I've got a post out, Kip's portrait. So this is Kip. Um, I've literally just finished him yesterday. So I've got to sign up his certificate of authenticity. But... I thought that I would just show you his finished portrait before I get him posted off today. Um, I've actually done another portrait for this lady. It's for her daughter. She has another cat called Dusty. Um, so he's going to be making his way and he'll be with Dusty's portrait as well. So yeah, very excited about that one. While I'm just getting Kip's portrait ready, to take to the post office. I thought I'd talk to you a bit about what I've been doing and some of my plans for the day. Here I just have this thank you card. I printed out a sheet of them, but I only cut them very roughly. So I'm just trying to make it look a bit neater, I suppose, before I put it in with his portrait. Um, it might be something that I, because I printed it off myself, that I look into getting like professionally designed and printed at some point but for now I just thought it might be a nice touch but I'm just trying to get all the edges as thin as this one so hopefully I don't end up going over the purple line on accident I did a bit there but it's all right I'm trying my best and I also currently print out my certificate of authenticity so it might be that at some point I get those professionally printed out um I'm not entirely sure yet didn't cut very smooth so yeah i've got to get this authenticity written out and then i've got to package it up uh write the address on and then get that posted out but i also have some oh that's a horrible noise i think that will be fine so it's not the best cutting but i think for now that will do it's just kind of like a little thank you but it's not very well printed as you can see um but i do have other stuff to do as well today i've got to start my next portrait and then i've also got to try out these new tools which i'll show you later in a second I've got my shoes and coat on um here is Kip's portrait but I thought before we did that we just have a little organize of some of this stuff which I use for my portraits so I'm going to put the tissue paper and the extra bits of paper for writing addresses and stuff on I'm going to put all of that in one folder so it's just all in one place and then that is nice and safe in there. And then I thought in this one, we can just put my thank you cards and certificate of authenticity. But after I've done this, we are going to go to the post office. So I've dropped Kip's portrait off at the post office. And no, this is not it. This is a package that was delivered today. And I think I know what it is. So I'm going to open it on camera. So this is from my lovely cousin, um, I did a portrait of their dog for them, 
called Ember, who um, you might have seen in one of my previous videos. They said, oh, can we get you in here for doing her portrait? And I said, we don't have to, but if there is anything, I quite need some new covers. And by the looks of things, they got me two lots of covers. I've got other shape tools, but I only asked them for one shape tool um, because I didn't want to be greedy. And they've got me a double. But this tool is uh, a really good one because as you can see, it's got quite a fine things so it's good for smaller portraits and these soft tools if you rub on them too hard they kind of um like fray apart so it's really good that i've got lots of covers for this one now and i can have different covers for different colors and then they also were the ones that got these indenting tools for whiskers would be really handy so you're gonna get to see me try out these in that video but i'd just like to say a big thank you to my cousins my cousin for all of those um and you did, really didn't have to um but it's going to be really really helpful i can't wait to try these out especially so as you can see i have been doing some stuff in the time while i've been away printed out the stuff i need for my next portrait which i haven't actually started on yet i haven't actually done any drawing today but hopefully i'm gonna get some done later um, I do have a few things that I need to do first and then I also have just done about an hour and a half of editing to get the line curve part two tutorial <laughs> finished. The only bit I've got uh, left to do on that is the final watch through but I'm not going to do that right now because the hour and a half editing has messed up my eyes because for some reason whenever I'm looking at a laptop I strain my eyes. Not on an iPad, not on a phone, just at a laptop or computers. Very strange. But before, before I work on my commission I've actually got a... Um, cut some paper. Now I do have the paper already for my um, commission cut out, but what I need to do is I've got two more potentials booked in. Um, I think there are two potential A4s. They're not 100% booked in yet, but I just want to have my paper ready even if those ones aren't booked in. So then I've got two A4s on standby and two 5 by 7s on standby. The reason for cutting the two 5 by 7s is that I've got the extra little st strip of paper that I can use with my indenting tools that I I want to test it on the paper that I'm actually going to be drawing on, you know? Um, so I'm going to test it that way. It's my pan pastels, dark colour pencils, light colour pencils, because this next commission is a surprise commission, so I can't show you, but it does have a few white whiskers on it. And I figured if I can get those indenting tools working and use them on this commission, it's going to be really helpful for me. So it just makes more sense to wait a bit to draw and then to just test the indenting tools beforehand. So I'm gonna go cut my paper now and I'll show you how I do that. So this is the paper cutter that I use. It's just about run and brand, but I find that it's not actually aligned very well. So I have to line everything up with this edge rather than right against the edge, if that makes sense. But what I like to do anytime I'm cutting the A4 is I bring a piece of pre-cut A4 paper and just measure where it comes to on this line. So this is cut into A4 pieces now. The other one is just up there and I'm gonna keep it up there and this is the one that I'm gonna cut into five by seven and I'll do that using these guidelines here and again, lining it up along that line. So now those are all cut and then I've got my little scrap pieces that I'm gonna do my test with my denting tools on. So now I'm just gonna have a little experiment with these. Um, but I do need to open them up first, so I have finally managed to crack into them. Gonna see how pretty those are. So as you can see, they're double sided and they've got a big range of sizes from small to big. So that's why I ordered a multi-pack because I kind of thought that way there would be more variety of what we could choose. They don't make it very easy to get into, I can't lie. You can have a look at it. Feels decent quality. Thick sides, so you can see how it makes a scratch into the paper. And this side is a lot thinner. Ah, oh, okay. I think this one is probably the thinnest one. I can, oh yeah, that one's going to be good. That one seems to cut a lot deeper than that, if it makes sense. Do a little test with the pan pastel, particularly on this one, of how well. 
Oh, so the thin one stays white quite well. That's quite good. That is quite good. Now, as you can see, the pigment has gone, the pigment has gone into it a bit, but like, let me do, show you an example of what I usually do. This. And I just press it in as hard as I can. And it's not, it's not as crisp. I don't know if you can tell. And the line isn't as precise. Oh my goodness. I'm actually so excited for this. Now I want to do a few more tests with this. So I'm going to do them with, that's like kind of like a medium sized one. We'll do the tiny one. So I just want to have a look on the back. It doesn't come through on the back. Um, and this is only 120 GSM paper. I like to work on quite smooth paper and it just so happens that mine likes to be quite light. Lighter pan pastels. See how that works. I'm just gonna... Yeah, like that. And as you can see, that's worked quite worked really nicely actually I'm really excited for this now and then what about if we try and add some pencil I'll just show you this up close if we are trying to add some pencil say fur strokes because I find it's when I'm doing this that's when the The pencil starts to soak into the paper, uh, into the paper, and into the creases a lot more. Let's have a look at that. Oh my! Oh my goodness! So as you can see, it kind of gone into it on the little one, uh, on the bigger one, but on the little one, it's a lot. Oh my goodness! Whereas if you do that on the um, thingy one, I'll just show you now gonna make another line and then get the lighter pan pastel on it wow okay that was not what I meant to do um I meant to get the white and try that and if you put the lighter pan pastel on that and then we try and add the fur strokes on top It goes into it a lot more and those ones are left a lot cleaner like even if I go over it a lot especially that little one is left so so clean it's it just looks a lot better and I am a huge fan of that actually we're just gonna add some uh, darker color pencil over it just to show you what I mean and that one I'm, I, I am going quite hard pressure here. That one, it just goes completely over it. Also, for anyone wondering what I'm leaning on, um, I am leaning on my clipboard right now, so it is quite... Uh, so that's why there's the little um, website and whatever on it. That one has phased a lot better. It's a lot cleaner. Like, even if you're going over thicker one so here's what I mean the thicker one doesn't stand as well as the thinner two I don't know whether that would be different if I pressed extremely hard yeah harder definitely works better It's just working a lot cleaner. I'll show you this up close. So that's the pet. Uh, that's the thicker one. That is a colour pencil. Those are the thinner ones. And then here are some other tests with colour pencil. And that's the thicker one, and that's colour pencil. And as you can see, it's holding a lot better. So I think these are definitely worth. If you're a colour pencil or use pan pastel, if you're a an artist, I think these are definitely worth the money and they come in a pack of 10 with literally 
so many different sizes excuse the tape all over them they were no nightmare to open they come in so many different sizes so that was the pan pastel and the polychromo color pencils i just put on them but i think it would be interesting to see how they fare against the luminance and the pablos and the other kind of pencils that i use so we're just gonna do a couple more test strips just to show you how they do over those, because um, the Pablo's and the Luminance are a lot creamier pencils. I'm going to shade that in. So the, so the thin ones are definitely faring better. So if you're wanting something that stays completely white, I would recommend the thin ones. But like I said, these come in a pack of 10, so it's really not that... Like, even if I like shade directly over it, still not really making a dent. And then we have the luminance as well. Same thing. These are even creamier, so if any of them were gonna get in the tooth, it would be these ones. Like you can see, the thinner ones definitely fare better, but it's a lot better than the um, colour pencil does, I'm going to show you. I'm going to do a little bit with the Pablo. It just goes straight over it. And then the luminance. Again, that worked better than the Pablo, but like, if you press harder, it goes into it. So I definitely think these are what I'm going to be using for whiskers and whatnot from now on. Look at those results. And this is on the paper I used to draw. That's insane. I absolutely love these. I am so glad I asked for these. So this is what wooden ones look like. And they come in a pack of 10 with these multicolor ones. I was just going to open them. Not do as vigorous testing. Oh, no, it's meant to be open this side. Sorry. Can I kind of compare how thin it is? Because that one's really thin. And I think it might be thinner. No, it's kind of as thin. Um, I was just going to see what the quality was like on these ones. Again, they feel really sturdy and really well made. Yeah. That is really... And again, these results just say, they just speak for themselves, honestly. What about if we're going in the direction? Again, excellent performance. If you needed to cover them up, I'm sure you could. That is the one question I have is, if I need to cover them up, could I? And the answer is, sort of so if i did need to cover them up if i place one in the wrong place it is possible to cover them up but just by general how you'd be doing fur they are not going they're still going to be there they're still gonna and this is in no way sponsored at all um i haven't these are just a gift from my cousin because i wanted some indenting tools um like i said these are in no way sponsored um if you're looking for some good quality and dental tools for lots of sizes, then I will leave the link to these in the description if I can find it, because these are definitely worth, they, these are worth, and they're only £5, I think, for 10 and they're really good quality, they're definitely worth the money. So, as you can see, that was just a little clip of me working on my commission. I really wish I could show you the, all, the whole thing, but I can't, as I said, it's a surprise one. I haven't actually done much drawing today. I've done quite a lot of admin, like editing, social media, um, just general stuff that I need to get done. I've still got quite a bit that I need to get done. I need to rewatch and finish uploading the Lion Cub tutorial and I need to edit this as well. Um, so yeah, I think I'm gonna say 
goodbye now and call it the end of the day as it's what 6 p.m now and i don't think i'm actually going to do much more but that's very interesting today um but i hope you guys all enjoyed this studio vlog and what i get up to in a day as a young artist so yeah and i also hope that my review little whatever of the indenting tools may be useful to some of you if any of you were looking into purchasing those i definitely recommend them um, but yeah, I really hope you enjoyed this video and I hope to see you in more ones in the future. Bye!